We just pulled up at this old mill and we are kicking it in Little Rock, Arkansas. I mean, that just looks too fun not to do, right? Now I don't know what to do. Or what <gasps> that trail did Jimmy, us. that's illegal here, you can't say that. This is super nice. So we're checking out the old mill in Little Rock, Arkansas, and it comes out of nowhere, and it's just this gorgeous like oasis of trees and the water wheel that's turned by water generates electricity. I don't know if it actually does, but it's very pretty here. Little hidden gem in Arkansas. Oh, let's go explore. <laughs> I cannot believe how green the river is. Is it a river? Creek? Creek? The body of water. The body of water. I think right over that ridge over there is actually a pond or... So now I don't know, is it a pond or a lake? I don't know it's what the size it is. It's probably a pond. Yeah. Right over that ridge is a pond that I guess feeds into this creek area and runs the old mill. But I don't know why it's so green. It looks really cool. I've never described water as like emerald green before, but that's like actually what it is. There's turtles down there. So we're standing currently in the old mill, which is a replica of another mill from the 1800s. Everything here in the mill and the park area is completely made out of stone and concrete. So all of the wooden structures and handrails and benches that you see that look like they're made out of wood, it's all concrete. It just gives it all a really cool look to it that's kind of hard to describe. We also read that this mill was shown in the opening credits for Gone with the Wind, the 1939 movie. So that's pretty cool. Just behind me over there, you can see the lovely Lake Number Three. And I'm not kidding, that's the name according to Google. It's a nice sunny day. We have a beautiful location, and Natalie and I are gonna go grab some lunch. Nope, that's not happening. Natalie's trying her best to show you guys her sandwich because this is the first time we've had both lettuce and tomato on our sandwiches in a very long time. We usually don't have space for it in our fridge, but we had tacos the other day, so we had to buy the lettuce and tomatoes and we made room for it. We had some leftovers and so she put them on our sandwiches. This is the best sandwich I've had in like a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> so lunch was great and we had the perfect view sitting here. There's like this really nice bench, but we did find one downside of having concrete instead of wood. It's really cold to sit on for 30 minutes. So cold that when Jimmy finished eating, he got up and he's like walking laps around here to warm up. Oh my gosh. What is he doing? Oh my god. Y'all, we are in public right now. I should have known he's gonna do that because that was like one of the first things he spotted when we walked out here. He said, is that a tunnel? His mind just goes straight for it. We actually learned about this place and decided to come here from another YouTube channel called Shelly's Nest. And they like to travel and make videos about their time in their RV. And really fun fact is, they're actually my parents. So they made a video about this place probably sometime last year. And we just happened to be in Little Rock and we decided to stop by and check it out too. So we should probably get out of here. We've been here far longer than anyone else and we're probably overstaying our welcome. 
So we're gonna try to go find a place to stay for tonight and head on over to West Little Rock where we have some plans for tomorrow. So far in our travels, Jimmy and I have pretty much stuck to camping at Walmart parking lots, truck stops, uh, the occasional Cracker Barrel if we're feeling fancy. The reason for that is we've been in the mountains pretty much since we left our home state of South Carolina. So we're a little hesitant to go drive into the woods if it's gonna get us down a really mountainy path that our bus can't handle. But we think that we found our first wild camping spot. We're excited because we've always wanted to do dispersed camping where we can stay in pretty outdoorsy areas and we're not just in a parking lot. So. Hopefully this goes well because this is kind of what we were dreaming of. We drove past the dispersed camping spot and saw the road that we were supposed to go up. Long story short, we're sleeping at Walmart tonight. So I think plan B has also fallen through. Jimmy's looking for a third plan right now. And I'm not sure what that's gonna be. I was honestly a little relieved that we didn't have to go park at the first place, the, uh, the wild camping, because on iOverlander, it said it was available, but the only review is from June, and it said that it was not clean and loud and up a dirt road. At first I was relieved, but then now I don't know what to do. We're looking for more Walmart, so then we'll probably call ahead. I mean, we could ask these people. We've parked under one of those signs before because they told us it was okay. So I mean, we could just go inside and ask, and they might say it's all right, but I doubt it. <laughs> I was really disappointed that the wild camping spot fell through. I thought that was gonna be a fun new adventure, but that's all right. I did not really want to drive up that gravel road with all those work vehicles there. Didn't really seem like a good idea. At least this spot has really good direct sunlight right on our solar panels. So while we sit here and figure it out, we can charge up our batteries a bit because there's no overnight RV parking, but we should be fine for an hour or two. Update number three for the Walmart saga. We went inside and we asked them and they said it was okay. We asked customer service and the lady at the desk asked the second person and he asked someone else and it seemed to be going up the chain three times and um, this really official looking person came up and they said, yes, we can stay for one night as long as we're way out of the way and as long as we're gone in the morning, which is never a problem. So I feel a lot better. I'm still nervous because we are literally parked 10 feet away from one of the no overnight parking or you'll get towed signs. We're gonna try our best to relax a little bit and hopefully we don't get a knock on the door later tonight. Tacos, 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 tacos. Ooh, now you're talking. <laughs> talking about tacos. <laughs> I'm over here reading emails and I should be getting ready for tacos. To be fair, we had tacos last night, so tonight we get leftover tacos, which are honestly just as good and they're a lot faster to make. Yeah, win-win. Tacos. Tacos. <laughs> Chicken. For anyone that wants to learn another fun fact about Natalie. Oh no. It's that she likes to put Greek yogurt in place of sour cream on her tacos. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried it, it's actually not like too noticeable, but she buys the Greek plain yogurt not uh, vanilla, plain. Yeah, and so she replaces all of her sour cream. I still use just normal sour cream. He hasn't joined the club yet, but I'll get him one day. This has 17 grams of protein in one serving. This has one. <laughs> it's a good value if you want protein, but we're literally having chicken tacos. So I feel like we're having enough protein in the meal already. There's never enough protein, Jimmy. That's true. We don't work out enough to <laughs> need this much protein. We got something planned tomorrow, so we gotta fuel up. That is true, actually. Thank you, Natalie. You're welcome. We just pulled up at the Pinnacle Mountain Trailhead. We got a really nice sunny spot, and it's the perfect day for this. 
Hey there, kids. Jimmy, this isn't a kid school bus anymore. <laughs> oh yeah. I forget because there's two crazy kids on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. There's one. You? Uh-uh. So as you might know, Natalie and I are at the Pinnacle Mountain trailhead, but today we're gonna try to make it interesting. We couldn't decide whether we were gonna do the west trailhead or the east trailhead. They all lead up to the same summit. So we decided to do both. And we're gonna try to do both, one before lunch and one after lunch, and we're going to compare them. We're gonna compare them in difficulty, the amount of traffic, how many people are on each trail, and the scenery. So those are the three criteria we're gonna judge each trail on. It starts straight up. That's not a good sign. Also, there's three red signs at the very start of the trail. So we're officially starting the West Trail to the summit. This trail is only a mile and a half, but it's like more than 700 feet of elevation gain, which for us, I think is gonna be kind of a lot. So I think it's a little steep. I don't think that's the trail, Jimmy. <laughs> Maybe not for you. Oh my gosh. I was just joking around, but this is actually working pretty well. So Jimmy's gone off the grid. <laughs> He's blazing a new trail. So I'm gonna stay on the original trail because we said we were gonna grade the hike up there, not the Jimmy way of getting up there. Is that a bird? <laughs> it could just be a shoe. I definitely see some feathers. I'm starting to think it's a hat. I think it's a hat. It's just a hat. <laughs> oh man, we were so disappointed. It's, it looked like feathers on this side. It doesn't now that I'm up close. Yeah, now that we're up close to it, I feel a little bit dumb, but <laughs> it did look like a, a bird. I saw feathers, I swear. We're not even at the top yet and we've already got a really nice view here. <sighs> I think so too. Aww. You're supposed to say, Jimmy, the, tour, the view's over there. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> You're too nice to me, Jimmy. Only when the camera's on. <laughs> Difficulty increases with elevation. Over boulders. Uh -oh. Hey. <laughs> Let's do the right one. It says it's more difficult, but it's a direct trail over boulders. That does sound more fun. Both merge into a rocky trail to the summit. That sounds rad. Oh my gosh. Is it another hat? No, come here. Wow. wow that is really cool. That's much better than a hat. <laughs> or a bird. A bird would have been cool. This is awesome. That is really cool. And we're not even at the pinnacle yet. Yeah, this is just an intermediary view. Is that what you call it, pinnacle? Yeah. I know it's a summit. It's pinnacle Mount. Oh pinnacle yeah, it's mountain. Pinnacle Mountain. We're trying to go find the pinnacle. I guess so. <laughs> oh, that's really neat. Yeah. All right, we're like halfway done, so. Well, I give this trail an A plus for their bench placement, because this is an excellent spot. If we're talking about benches, I'd give it maybe an A or A minus. It is really good, but there is a small tree that takes up like a third of the view. I bet we could find a better one. I don't want to give it an A+. Plus. There's nothing higher than that. We're not even at the peak. I can't believe Jimmy's docking points for the bench because there's a tree in front of it. It's yeah. nature, Jimmy. You just want to pave all of this, it's don't you? It's the wrong type of nature. <laughs> I need to see lakes and mountains. Not a little sapling three feet away from the bench in my face. <laughs> We're here to review it. We got to be honest and true. And if there's a tree in my way, then that docks the scenery points, I gotta say. Jimmy is ruthless. I gave it all. an A. I don't want you grading my papers. You would pass. You would have a 4.0 GPA. <laughs> so we've reached a fork in the trail. This way is more difficult and is like a direct path over boulders. And this way is supposed to be a little bit easier, but they lead to the same spot. We're gonna take the more difficult one because that seems more fun. That's crazy. I'm so out of breath. I'm really starting to see why that person ditched their hat and gloves. So I'm kind of regretting my jacket right now. Jimmy over here started out the day with two pairs of pants on, but he at least was smart enough to take them off before we got started. It was in the 30s this morning and our diesel heater can only do so much. Yeah, it was really cold this morning, but up here with all this like 
vertical climbing, it's uh, it's pretty warm. I mean, that just looks too fun not to do, right? I don't know. I could do it. Am I that hard to live with? <laughs> you just make me want to live life to the fullest. Aw. And leave you and go up that trail right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hold you back. Use your best judgment. No. Wow, you look really small. There's a lizard up here. No way! All right, that was pretty short lived. It gets pretty vertical up there, so I had to stop. I think I could have kept going, but I didn't want to scare Natalie. Uh -huh. We'll go with that excuse. This is the type of trail I've always wanted to go on because I feel like it scratches the itch for bouldering, eh, you know, for an amateur like me that's never done that before. And so it's really fun. I got to save my energy. We have one more hike to do after this. I don't know if you can see those yellow marks going up that trail. That's where we're supposed to go. After quite a climb, we've made it to the summit. So it's really pretty up here. You have almost a 360 degree view of Little Rock and the surrounding mountains. We're gonna head back down and try the East Trail and see if it's as good as the West. While we were on our way back down, we found an even better summit and nobody else is here. We started our descent down the mountain and we've not seen a trail marker in quite some time but it's pretty steep and honestly it takes a lot of focus to watch your step and make sure that you're supporting yourself enough to not snap your ankle so this is a little um challenging getting down even though it's all downhill i mean as long as we keep heading down we'll make it out of here right like We'll probably find the trail markers eventually. There were signs at the beginning saying that they weren't done putting them up. Whoops. Who knew that rocks grew on trees? Why did I bring her? <laughs> I'm fun. The walk down is not nearly as bad as I thought it would be, but it is doing a number on my ankles. They somehow paved most of this with stones, so it's basically a staircase all the way up, except for the last little bit at the top which you have to climb. So it's really fun and uh, kind of easy to walk down. So we're about to head off and go to the East Trailhead, but before we do, we wanted to give our opinions and quick rankings so we can compare it against the East Trail. So let's talk about difficulty. For our purposes, difficulty is a plus. I'd say four. I'd give it a four out of five uh, difficulty because it was very tough, it was straight up. But again, it's less than a mile straight up, so it's actually not too bad. So next one is the amount of traffic we saw. How many people did we see, Natalie? I lost count. I think we saw one group of people on the way up. There was about four or five at the peak and uh, maybe another four or five on the way down. So Groups of people. Groups, yeah, so I'd give it like a three out of five. Gosh, I'd say like a two and a half out of five. All right, and finally the scenery of the trail, like how cool was the sights. This isn't for the peak, but this is for the trail itself because the two trails share the same peak. I really liked it. There were amazing parts. Um, one downside of going straight up is you're constantly looking straight down at your feet. And uh, I'd give it like a four and a half out of five. It was almost perfect. There just were some parts where you knew there was a good view, but it was covered with uh, trees that you just couldn't get past. I was gonna say four and a half, but for a slightly different reason. Some people 
didn't pick up after their dogs. So I feel like that kind of hurts the scenery a little bit. That's a good point. So there's our rankings. I'm not gonna do the math here, so Natalie can put up the average here. And we'll go and head over to the east side and start that trail. Buckle up, Jimmy. We were wondering when we would have to start going up because most of this hike has been pretty flat, like normal hiking terrain. I don't know if you can see it behind me, but that is boulder straight up and that's where it's telling us to go. Natalie's excited. That was a lot tougher going down. Like it really doesn't look like it, but we're on the right path, I promise. There's a little marker right there. I can't believe it. Every time they tell us to go up, I think it's like the most steep I've ever climbed. And then they show us this mountain wall that we need to go up right there. Oh my gosh, my heart is pounding. No way, dude. What? <laughs> dude, that's the marker. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's keep going. I feel like a monkey. I know, me too. I feel like I should have to have like a harness to do this. It just keeps going up and up. We're gonna be there in no time though. It feels like we're just climbing a ladder. I'm surprised this place is called Little Rock and not Ladder Rocks. I had a second chance to leave her at the bus and I didn't. <laughs> uh, I should have learned from the first hike. I think we found our next wild camping spot for the night. Oh, that's looking pretty cozy right now. It's day three of being stuck on this mountainside. <laughs> Natalie left me a day ago. She went for help. She's probably not coming back. Oh, there's a wild bear coming up. Oh, where am I den? <laughs> that's one tired looking bear. Natalie's not doing too hot, you guys. Where is she? Oh. There she is, way down there. She's like two rocks below me, but she's still like an entire person's height lower. I can touch you, like we're this close, but like you're so much taller. Yeah. <laughs> so we made it to the summit for the second time, and now we're gonna head back down. It's starting to get late, so the sun is setting, and this time we're on the east side of the mountain, so it's gonna get dark a little bit faster for us. So we might just focus on climbing and we'll pick you back up when it gets flatter. We made it down the <laughs> vertical section, and now it's just flat, smooth sailing from here. We're back on flat land. That was really tough. That was, yeah, that was actually really hard. I wanna start calling Arkansas or Kansas after what that trail did to Jimmy, us. Jimmy, that's illegal here, you can't say that. I did read that it's illegal to mispronounce Arkansas in the state of Arkansas. She was really excited when she read that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I've been taking it very seriously, unlike some people here. Oh, uh, that trail should have been easier. All right, so what would you rate it? Difficulty. Okay. What's the east side? All right, my number, six out of five. It is like a ladder going up. A really dangerous, rocky ladder filled with sharp rocks. It's really difficult. I would not recommend it to everyone. Um, yeah, honestly. I would say five out of five. I didn't realize we were stretching the scales that's here. That's how strongly I felt about it. Traffic, I'd say like three and a half out of five. Fewer people than we saw on the West Trail. I don't know, I felt like we were alone for most of it. I'm gonna give it a four and a half out of five. We saw a decent amount of people. I think it was, I think it was kind of fun because every time you pass someone, like you were just kind of like sharing looks and like a couple words of like, you know, you're sharing the torment together. All right, what's the last one? The scenery. scenery seen on the trail. I'm gonna give it a, a two and a half out of five. Wow, okay. Because pretty much what you're seeing now is what we saw going all the way up, which is very pretty, but you know, I'm here for mountain views and cool vistas. So two and a half out of five, it's still pretty solid because those rocks were insane. I've never seen anything like that and it was a whole new experience. 
I would say four out of five for the scenery. I like the diversity where you see trees and some dirt and then suddenly it's just pure rocks. I kind of yeah. like the stark change. I feel like you get to see two different hikes at once. Ooh. Jimmy, what's that up ahead? Oh, the parking lot? I think so. It feels so weird to walk on flat land again. This is by far the most tired my legs have ever been after a three mile hike. My legs feel like they're made of gelatin.